You know what time it is. Welcome to Count It right here on Points Bet, a Fanatics experience. My name is Kazim Famiwide. Thank you so much for joining me this Thursday afternoon. And you wanted some offseason fireworks. You got some offseason fireworks yesterday as the Milwaukee Bucks, Phoenix Suns, and Portland Trail Blazers pull off a blockbuster trade. Let's break it all down. Obviously, the headliner, Damian Lillard, the longtime Portland Trail Blazer, traded to the Milwaukee Bucks to join up with MVP and NBA champion Giannis Antetokounmpo, forming one of the most deadliest duos in the NBA before they even step foot on the court together. Now, obviously, this was a massive three-team trade that has had ripple effects throughout the entire NBA. Let's break it all down. The Portland Trail Blazers, they received Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, Tumani Kamara, the Bucks 2029 first-round pick, unprotected, and swap rights on Bucks 2028 and 2030 picks. The Phoenix Suns got some sneaky depth as a part of this trade. They received Yosef Nurk from the Portland Trail Blazers, Grayson Allen for the Milwaukee Bucks, Nasir Little from the Blazers, and Keon Johnson. Wow. Now, there's a whole lot to digest when it came to this trade and and what it just not just means for the teams involved, but the teams that were unfortunately not involved as well. Let's talk about what it means immediately for the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, Giannis Antetokounmpo went on record Earlier this summer and pretty much put it all out there for the Milwaukee Bucks and said, hey, we all got to be on the same page here. If you're not going to be in the championship window and doing things to continue to be in that championship window, I'm going to have to look elsewhere. And judging by how superstars have been moving around the entire league, especially in the past 10 to 15 years, the Milwaukee Bucks were not about to mess around and find out when it came to if Giannis wanted to leave Milwaukee. They put all their chips in the table to acquire Damian Lillard, one of the most electrifying short sh- scoring guards in NBA history, pardon me. Last year, he played 58 games when those obviously shut down when the Blazers looked like they weren't going anywhere. But in those 58 games, he averaged 32.2 points per game, shot 46% from the field, 37% from three, seven assists, 4.8 rebounds, and close to a steal per game. Now, the year before that, he only played 29 games due to injury. But the 32.2 points per game in his uh, final season was the highest of his career and Dame now goes and gets which is obviously his greatest teammate he's ever played with Giannis Antetokounmpo NBA champion MVP a person currently in his prime and has a very hefty supermax extension waiting for him to resign with the Milwaukee Bucks now with that being said acquiring Dame Lillard You're looking at a a depth chart that gives the Milwaukee Bucks a team that was already a handful to deal with in the Eastern Conference. When it it comes to the depth chart, I mean, look at how the the, the new look Milwaukee Bucks look. Outside of Damian Lillard, who will probably obviously be starting that point guard, you got Marshawn Beauchamp. Uh, Pat Connaughton, a sniper from deep. Malik Beasley, who had some really good minutes and and, uh, days with the Los Angeles Lakers last year. At forward, you got Bobby Portis, fresh off of the Olympics. Obviously Giannis, his brother Thanasis, Jay Crowder, uh, a very good, solid uh, backup forward. And, of course, Chris Middleton, who may not have had the best season last year coming off an injury, but... Signed a new con well, well signed a new contract last year and is looking to probably slide into a much comfortable third slash fourth position as a scorer for this team and back to a three and D guy. And of course, with the big men, you got one of the best defensive centers in the league in Brooke Lopez alongside his brother Robin Lopez. Before this deal was done, obviously. The Milwaukee Bucks were a team to be reckoned with last year. They led the Eastern Conference in wins last uh, NBA season. And that was, of course, before Giannis Antetokounmpo went down with injury towards the end of the season. And, of course, in the first round of the playoffs with the Miami Heat. Speaking of the Miami Heat. They look like they got a little bit of egg on their face this morning as uh, the team that they were so longly linked towards throughout this entire offseason through 
the mouth of Dame Lillard, through Aaron Gordon, his agent, through anybody who knew anything about these trade negotiations, and Pat Riley himself, many, many people believed Damian Lillard was going to be a member of the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler believed he was going to be a member of the Miami Heat. Bam Adebayo believed he was going to be a member of the Miami Heat. And surprisingly enough, Tyler Hero must have thought that Damian Lillard was going to be a part of the Miami Heat, which is really peculiar because any sort of trade package that you saw being put together had Tyler Hero being a part of it. But as news broke yesterday on social media, he quote tweeted Jimmy Butler after he uh, – Looked a little bit disappointed, saying that he needs to, uh, the league to look into the Milwaukee Bucks for tampering, even though the Miami Heat made it painfully obvious that they wanted Damian Lillard throughout this entire offseason, especially on IG Live socials. And anytime you saw Bam or Dame doing one of these things, doing the Dame Tom taunt, uh, they weren't necessarily making it less than obvious that they wanted Dame Lillard. However, as it turned out, uh, negotiations broke down. And like I've said all summer long, I don't think the Portland Trailblazers wanted to do anything to, to discredit the legacy that Dame Lillard left in Portland, right? Like, he kind of hoping that Dame Lillard would get the Kevin Garnett treatment. His loyalty to his franchise would gain him uh, the destination of his choice, even if it was through trade. Now... As it, uh, you know, would come to pass, Dame Lillard is not a member of the Miami Heat. But according to reports, one would say that the Miami Heat and negotiations broke down because whether it was picks, whether it was players, whether it was the spite trade that a lot of people are trying to point towards, they didn't want to send Dame Lillard to the Miami Heat because maybe it just sends a bad message to the entire league, especially in the era of player empowerment that a lot of NBA owners seem to not be the biggest fans of. However, you can't be mad if you're Dame Lillard. And yes, you're not going to go to sunny Miami. You're not going to be around the beaches, the good weather, the heat culture. It's a little bit colder in Milwaukee, but if your entire MO is winning an NBA championship, you cannot disagree that this is probably the best situation for Dame Lillard to possibly accomplish that. He's made it known through interviews with GQ. They made it known during the All-Star draft that we're going to start really examining now <laughs> for, for years to come because you just never know which superstar players are going to end up playing with each other, especially when it comes to picking people. But Dame Lillard said in the GQ interview, if there's one player out there he feels like he can win a championship with, it's Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis Antetokounmpo, during the NBA All-Star Draft, uh, picking some of the best players in the league, he went with Dame Lillard emphatically. And um, just in the basketball sense, it is really hard to see how teams like the Boston Celtics, the Philadelphia 76ers, who God knows what they're going to look like at the beginning of the season, and the Miami Heat, who won the Eastern Conference this year but obviously lost out on the Dame Lillard sweepstakes, are going to be able to be dealt with this upcoming season, whether it's the high pick and roll, Dame Lillard being one of the most elite sharpshooters from downtown that we've ever seen, and a rolling Giannis Antetokounmpo, who is not just an incredible finisher, but a playmaker as well, with Chris Middleton on one side, Brooke Lopez on another. Offensively, that is going to be a nightmare. Defensively, I expect Giannis Antetokounmpo to possibly take a step back as far as scoring as much as he needs to. We've seen it during these playoffs. We've seen it in many playoffs in the past. Even though they did pull it off and win an NBA championship uh, less than three years ago, it was not the easiest road, especially when it came to creating shots in crunch time. Yes, Giannis Antetokounmpo was a force of nature, but Chris Middleton was heavily slept on throughout that entire playoff run. And we've seen in the past year or two, especially due to injury, he may have taken a step back as far as offense is concerned. Dame Lillard comes in and answers that in spades. And now as a motivated superstar player, getting the best chance he probably has at winning an NBA championship, one would assume that Dame would be motivated to win it all this year. As far as NBA futures are concerned and how it all shakes out, the Milwaukee Bucks are now the preeminent outright favorite 
to win it all at plus 375. The Boston Celtics right behind them at plus 500. The Denver Nuggets, the defending champions at plus 650. And the Phoenix Suns at plus 600. Boston Celtics, a team who just lost Marcus Smart and is always going to be in the running as far as being Eastern Conference champions. Now the pressure is on them, and specifically Kristaps Porzingis, a person who was coming off foot injury and is going to have to deal with a Giannis and Brooke Lopez tandem that will have Damian Lillard to deal with in the backcourt as well. The Miami Heat, don't forget, that was a play-in team last year, not because of a lack of talent, but maybe it was due to injuries, a lot of players that they lost in the offseason. This could only be looked at as somewhat short of a disaster for the Miami Heat this offseason. They were counting on Dame Lillard to be that player to help them not just get through the regular season, being at a better seed uh, so they don't have to go through the, the, the murderer's row of the playoffs next year like they had to do this year. But now you, you, you keep all your pieces – and you have an opportunity to possibly go out and get the player that the Bucks traded. And that would possibly be Drew Holiday. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's get to the Phoenix Suns, a team whose odds are now plus 600 uh, as far as winning an NBA championship. They end their relationship with DeAndre Ayton, the former number one overall pick in the NBA draft, their former franchise center. And uh, even though this is a team that has a lot of depth, a lot of firepower between Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant, they added a whole lot of players in the offseason through free agency, through minimum deals, and now they add a couple of more players due to the Damian Lillard trade. Like I said earlier, the Suns received Yusef Nurkic, a guy who was a very uh, uh, good center when he plays, only 29 years old right now, averaged 13 and a half points per game, nine rebounds, and three assists while shooting 50% from the field in 52 games played last year. He signed a $70 million extension with the Blazers last summer, meaning he's got three years left in his contract. So he's going to a Phoenix Suns team with a lot of championship expectations and potential and a possibility to take lesser of a role to go in there and bang with the Anthony Davises, Nikola Jokic's of the world, and possibly DeAndre Ayton, of course. Now, who's to say if he's going to do any good? Because anybody who's seen the Portland Trailblazers play against the Nuggets and the Lakers in the past have seen Yusuf Nurkic absolutely get worked when it came to post play. Now, when it comes to Grayson Allen, I think that is a hand-in-glove fit for the Phoenix Suns. And it could be argued that the Suns did get better even though they got rid of DeAndre Ayton. Now, last year, even though he put up some respectable numbers, it was obvious that the relationship between the Phoenix Suns front office, some of the players on the Suns, and DeAndre Ayton definitely soured. I mean, the statistics never really tell the full story, but when he went up against the guys like Nikola Jokic, he got absolutely worked. Only put up 10 points and 8 rebounds in the last game. He mysteriously sat out, which came as a surprise to many other players throughout the league. And even though he averaged 13 and a half and 9, 13 and a half points and 9.7 rebounds, shooting 55% in the playoffs, it just didn't seem like he had the same sort of impact that he had when the Phoenix Suns went to the NBA Finals. Now, DeAndre Ayton goes over to the Portland Trail Blazers, a team that is going to have a lot less, I would say, championship expectations than one would expect. He goes into a team with Scoot Henderson, Anthony Simons, um, you know, a Shaden Sharp, a uh, team with a lot of young, explosive talent, but not necessarily anywhere near the realm of possibility of championship contention that the Phoenix Suns or the Milwaukee Bucks will be after this trade. Um, the Suns are definitely a more complete team this year. I mean, think about it. When you look at this depth chart, when you look at what the Phoenix Suns have now brought in after this trade, you got Eric Gordon, you got Keita bates Job, you got Utah Watanabe, Drew Eubanks, I mean, these are guys that they picked up off the free agency scrap heap last year. And uh, adding to the fact that you got Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal, who will be in your starting lineup. You got Bull Bull, who you added as well, who has a ton of 
potential, a ton of uh, uh, untapped skills that maybe will be utilized as a part of the Phoenix Suns. The Suns continue to be one of the more interesting teams going into this season. And as long as Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and probably Bradley Beal are healthy, they're going to have something to say about who comes out of the Western Conference. But in any case, the DeAndre Ayton era is over in Phoenix, and it seems thankfully so. The two parties just seem to be on opposite ends towards the end of this run, and now the Phoenix Suns can focus solely on getting back to the Western Conference Finals and NBA Finals, where they might, ah, there's a possibility we might get a rematch of the Finals from several years ago when the Bucks and Suns took on each other and Giannis Antetokounmpo came out on top. Last but certainly not least, now, Drew Holiday, as he was traded to the Portland Trail Blazers, the Blazers made it known immediately that they will not be keeping Drew Holiday and are going to be opening him up for many other suitors to possibly take on the all-star point guard, one of the best defensive guards in the league. Uh, I mean, how much, if I had a dollar for every time somebody said Drew Holiday was underrated, we'd have a whole lot of money to talk about. But let's think about it like this. The Blazers' heat deal doesn't go down for reasons many people may not understand for a while, but a lot of people are saying Tyler Hero isn't necessarily the piece that they want. I think Drew Holiday flipping him to a contender who has players, who has pieces, who has things that will help keep the Portland Trail Blazers uh, opportunities to grow over the next several years. Maybe you get more from a Drew Holiday than you get from a Tyler Hero. Just my opinion there. But if you're talking about teams that will have the best opportunity to get Drew Holiday, I'm looking at teams like the Boston Celtics. They gave up Marcus Smart, let him go to the Memphis Grizzlies in order to get Kristaps Porzingis, if they could somehow replace Marcus Smart with a Drew Holiday, you got to love their chances in the Eastern Conference. The Miami Heat, they lost out on Damian Lillard, but you could take some of those pieces that you weren't willing to give up to get Damian Lillard and get a guy who possibly fits in just as good with the quote-unquote Heat culture as anybody out there, and that's Drew Holiday, a guy who has had to carry that Bucks team in these past playoffs when Giannis Antetokounmpo went down with an injury. The Brooklyn Nets, they got so many assets through the trades for Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and still somehow to be Managed to be a very, very good team this past year. Mikael Bridges, Cam Johnson, Nick Claxton, a lot of those guys. You got a person like Drew Holiday into the mix. You got money to move around. Guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, Royce O'Neal, possibly Ben Simmons. That is an opportunity to get Drew Holiday back into the Eastern Conference and to a team that might sneak around and be pretty good this year. A team that was linked to Damian Lillard last uh, week as well, the Toronto Raptors. There's a possibility that they want to just strip this whole thing down, build around Scotty Barnes, Grady Dick, acquiring Drew Holiday as a uh, no-nonsense point guard to help alleviate the pressure of those two kids coming up as franchise players. Might be as good of a look as you can get for them. And the most intriguing to me are these last two teams, the Philadelphia 76ers and the Los Angeles Clippers. The last piece in the superstar carousel that's taken place this entire offseason is James Harden. Is there a way that you can facilitate a three-team trade that gets Drew Holiday to Philadelphia, James Harden to the Clippers, and the Portland Trailblazers getting a treasure trove of picks and players that'll keep them happy and keep them not good so they can draft more and more great players over the next few years? It's a possibility, and it's probably the most likely possibility if I had to put some greenbacks on where Drew Holiday is going to end up. Have a feeling we're going to figure out sooner rather than later as NBA training camp kicks off any day now. But in any case, the NBA season is just about to get started. We got some blockbuster trades to talk about, and as it shows, man, it seems like there's going to be a lot more movement as the offseason winds down and the regular season gets going. That's it for today's episode of Count It. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been Points Bet Fanatics Experience. My name is Kazim Famiwide, and I will catch y'all next time, people. Have a good one.